this is your instructor Joy. Thank you for your nice comments, questions, and sending me donations. Uh, please be encouraged to keep sending me your questions and let me know what you're working on. So this is the music that we're gonna work and play. <laughs> about those frets that you have to put from here all the way there because I do admit that's a great help but I find it um, if you play that one too long violinists um, are develop habit of relying on looking at the tape too much instead of learning to listen is as you know we play without frets here so do use those tapes I know it's very helpful for for, uh, for the beginning especially but see when it's in tune try to remember how it sounds so that later when you take those tapes or frets off that you can still uh, find your notes and trust me uh, your ears probably will make your notes more in tune than the tapes because it's impossible for uh, to find uh, all the tapes that's perfect in tune because each each intonation moves a bit depending what key you're playing depending what notes you're tuning into and so on unlike piano where there's no one key always sounds the same for us violinists we we adjust each intonation we call it just intonation depending what is the main line we have to adjust to so it's very very tiny 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 little bit of adjustment but nevertheless that's another reason for you to learn to listen better and with, with uh, patient and training patient training you should be able to do that yeah so first it's a key of b flat major which means we have flat the flat sign is this little stick and this little half circle we have two flat on b and e flat so that means B flat, we have one on G string, so that's G, A, B flat is right next to first finger, there's one B flat, there's another B flat, which is on A string, A, actually there are two more B flats, A, and you go all the way to the nut, there would be B flat, A, B flat, yeah, that's how, A, B flat. And then on that, the last B flat on E string would be one, two, three. B flat would be right next to third finger because this would be normal B. Now B flat, you have to make it half step lower, the pitch meaning lower, like this. So E, F, G, F, B flat. Yeah, those are B flats. 
Now let's see where E flats are. E flat is open, open D, E flat right all the way to the nut, like this. E flat, and there's another E flat on A string. A, B, C, D, E flat right there next to the third finger. So let's figure out what kind of hand position you're gonna do. So G, A, B flat. That's on G string now. B flat, C. So as you know, first, second finger close, third finger far away, far away. D, E flat. Fingers are far away because these are all whole step. A, B flat, C, D, E flat. So these three fingers are far away, but third finger and pinky are right next to each other. Like that. Oops. Yeah. On A string, now we're moving on to E string. F, G, A, and B flat. Same hand position as A string. First finger is away to the close to the knob. Second finger a little far away because it holds step. Third also, however, third and pinky right next to each other because those are, this is a half step. B flat, yeah? So once you're found um, the hand position, and to take enough time to find the one and go um, ascending and descending, going up and down, play those scales just to understand what kind of key you are in. Then, so let's talk about this particular piece. When you hear it, there's a lot of same kind of rhythm, which sounds like this. Or... Like that. So, um, uh, you might have heard before from other videos, it's a good idea to use shorter bows when you have a short uh, count, short beat notes, like one beat or half beat. Or when it's a good idea to use slow and longer bows, slow bow speed and longer bows when you have longer notes of two beats, three beats or more. Yeah. Here we have three times of one beat. One, one, one. So I'm using very little bow. But for the long one, which has three beats, I give myself the entire bow. It is a good idea to use down bow when you use long bows because with the help of gravity, it's easier to go. With the up bow, it, it is possible, but near the frog, which is this part, you have to lift up your elbow and arm so that the bow doesn't get too, um, too heavy, therefore it squeaks. Sometimes we have no choice, but we do so that we have to do that. But if you ha have choice, in this case you can choose uh, not to do, then I encourage you to do down bow every time when you're long, when you're using long bows. So those are the three beat notes. We call it dotted half note. So then, um, common mistake um, of a lot of violinists, when it's up bow, a lot of violinists start at the tip. It's not necessarily um, needed always even though that happens too. So since we're focusing this long bow, which is the first beat of the first proper bar, because the first three notes, it just belongs to the this down beat, yeah? So therefore, I bring the bow really close to the frog so that I make sure that I have long bow to go down. And I start maybe a little quarter part from the frog. And I do one, two, three. And then I have a long way to go. One, two, three. And it sounds nicer and easier. If you find it's a little too hard to do at the frog, then you can do the same thing but a little uh, quarter part up above from there. So from here, one, two, three. Oh, sorry. One, two, three. One, two, three, like this. So we want to start there, down, down ball. Then from there, we go a little quarter up so that we can go up ball. Sorry. Yeah, like that. So mostly it's good.
good idea to adjust your bowings for down bows I use for the long sustaining note. And then here, uh, the melodies, um, same melodies happen twice. <laughs> even though it's an identical melody. So. Yeah. Or you can play same in the same position, but make different dynamics. First time a little softer, second time a little louder, yeah, whichever you like. But try to make both times a bit different so that it's mm, the people don't get too bored or people know already what you're doing. Yeah? You want to have your audience a little more still mm, entertained and excited about your play by changing different kind of uh, uh, sound, color, or mood, things like that. And there's a chorus happening. So even though there's nothing marked, nothing say slow down or anything, but I gave a little each note, um, a little, a little accent and rubato. So holding a little longer because number one, this kind of it's kind of motive that this kind of bow stroke happens over and over from very beginning. Yeah. So this one happens again with a chorus and I want to remind people like remember this the rhythm that has been motive all this time but this time we're gonna not go down like beginning but we're going upwards to make it interesting. So to make that one a little more exaggerating I'm making each one a little more accented, a little stressed, a little more heavier at the beginning and even a bit longer to make things a little more interesting to catch people's attention. Because I had kind of last, kind of really big. Then I do this second one, I treat it as a little the opposite, a little whispering by tilting the bow and then I bring bow to the fingerboard and make it really soft and whispering sound. Yeah, and the same thing you can do again twice. And then... And then here the ending, you can stay just in the first position. to vibrate those sustaining long notes. Like, now third position. Here again. Now third position. Now I don't do two two, but I put a third finger next to a second finger on D string. That way I don't have to lift up. You see, it gets abruptly cut. So now, second finger, third finger, right next to second on D string, and I slide it up like this. So I hope this video was helpful. It's a beautiful piece. You know, hymns doesn't have to be always uh, boring. A lot of people find it a bit boring, even though a lot of them also always love to doing that one. But it's also up to the performer to make it a little more interesting. Yeah. So I hope you can make your own playing beautifully and interesting. Thank you for watching. Please remember to subscribe and share my videos. Bye bye.